Everybody is going through something. We're all going through something. I mean, I don't care if it's in relationships or finance or your mind or your work. God is using it all. All of it. He's using all of it because he wants us to know how to maneuver through everything. He doesn't want us to just know how to come in church and and be a good Christian here. He wants you to know how to have his strength when you're out there, when you're in your house, when you're dealing with rebellious kids, when you're dealing with a wayward husband. When you're, he, he wants us to know how to maneuver through everything. And we have to learn how to do that because if we do, now we're kingdom ready. Because, see, a lot of people uh, say they know what they're talking about, but when they go through some stuff, then you find out what people are really made of. You find out, oh, man, I thought they were so strong. Next thing you know, they are away from God all the way. You see, it's important who you hang with. It's important who you're drawing from because we have to draw from wisdom. We have to draw from strength. And if we don't, then we will find ourselves getting weak. This is why it's important who you hang out with. This is why it's important who you conversate with. This is why it's important what you say, what you allow your eyes to see. You have to be careful because let me tell you, the enemy is looking for any way in your life. He's looking for any way in your life. So don't give him place. That's what the scripture says. Give no place. No place for him. When you, when you are struggling, go get your word. But until you go to the word of God, you're not going to feel the release. You're not going to feel the strength. You might feel a little bit of comfort for two seconds, but it ain't going to last long because the enemy's going to come right back. Say, okay, yeah, I like that you did that. That just, that just, Slow your momentum down for a minute, but I'm coming back. And he's coming back stronger. You cannot ever figure God out. It's a journey. You don't know where he's taking you. All he asks us to do is just be faithful. And we'll land there, and then we'll look back and say, how in the world did I ever get here? This is where I never expected to be. But let me tell you, God has so much in store. There's dreams that he's placed in your heart that you can't even tell nobody because they don't think you're crazy. Those crazy dreams... Those crazy visions, the Holy Ghost planted those there. But listen, the key is you can't go ahead of him and say, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make this happen my way. You got to slow down. You got to get in line with him. And then you got to let him lead you. And when he does, you ain't going to fail. It's going to be good and it's going to be prosperous. You know, we have to really be careful to, to to protect our minds. Because like I said this morning, everything starts here. Everything. When you sin, it started here. When you succeed, it started here. Right? Everything starts here. So I want you to be very careful what you allow into your mind. You know, there are certain things I I just can't talk about. There are just certain things I absolutely cannot watch. There are certain movies I am not even thinking about going to see. Right? Because I know what it does to my spirit. And for anybody to ignore what it does to your spirit and say, I'm just going to do this anyway, that's being a fool. A fool for the devil. Because the Holy Spirit will, he he said he will truly guide and lead us, but he also will convict us. So listen to his, listen to what he's telling you in your spirit. When you feel something ain't right for you, it's not right for you. Because scripture says if it's sin for you, then it's sin for you. It's just sin. It may not be sin for for somebody else, but it might be sin for me. You see? So listen to the Holy Spirit. Get to know him. Get to know his voice. So in Romans 12, 2. It says, it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, it is then you will be able to, to test and, and approve what God's will is. So in other words, there is no way in the world that you could ever know what God's will is for your life if you don't start thinking like he thinks. So if we're going to renew our mind to think like him, then we got to use what he gave us, which is Hello, his word, his word Right? Okay, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I mean, you want the perfect will of God for your life, don't you? I mean, you want exactly what God has for you. That's what everybody, any Christian that would talk to you, they would say, I just want what the Lord has for me. I'm going to get mine. That, that's for me. I'm going to get mine. No, you're not. When's the last time you picked up your word? Don't tell me you're going to get your stuff because you can't get your stuff any other way than transforming your mind. 
he said, if we're going to get our stuff, then we got to do it his way, and we got to think like him. Otherwise, there's absolutely no way we're going to ever get it. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. I like this. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love this because I'm telling you, all we need to do <laughs> is have his mind. If we have his mind, we're going to have peace. Okay, so far, we're going to find his perfect will. We're going to do exactly what God has called us to do. We're going to do exactly what God wants us to do. And it's going to be exactly what we want to do because God's going to give us the desires of our heart. And he's going to have his desire will become our desire. And this is what we get if we simply transform our mind. And we will also have the peace of God. My God, what, do, you, do you see the benefits? There are so many benefits to just simply reading your word, declaring your word over your life, posting it on your post-its, doing whatever you got to do to transform your mind. Now listen, there ain't no shortcuts to this. Now I know the world has gotten away from the word. Everybody's afraid to say Jesus. Everybody's afraid to pray. Everybody's afraid to say Holy Spirit. And don't you dare say Holy Ghost. You know, everybody's afraid to say anything about God. But let me tell you, if you are going to be a strong Christian, you better learn that word. You better start declaring that word over yourself and over your family, over your situation, and you will see God move. You cannot hide your walk. Because when it becomes you, it's just you. You can't even get away from it. I'm telling you, I, I just don't know how to get away from it. And I'm so thankful that I don't. When you allow the Holy Ghost to do what he's going to do inside of you, Oh, the enemy, he wants to slow your momentum down. Let me tell you, that's the, that is the, the reason and that is the time that you need to push a little harder. Do not give in. Don't quit. If you don't quit, you cannot, you cannot fail. You cannot lose. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. I love that. Because I, I'm telling you, when I tell you I lived this scripture, I lived it, I lived it, I lived it. And I thought, okay, I'm going to trust the Lord with all my heart. And I'm not going to go by what I don't see and what I don't understand. I'm just going to keep on trusting the Lord. I just kept trusting the God. I mean, and, and, and you trust God by what you say. You trust God by what you allow in your heart. You trust God by how you act. You trust God by what you do. That's how you show God that you trust him. You can say I trust God all you want. But, but he wants to see actions, just like we do. You know, if you come here and you say, you can trust me, I'm going to be here for you, I got you, girl, and then I don't see you, then that means I don't trust you. You see? How many times did you tell God that, that he can, you can trust me, God, and he don't, he, don't, he don't even see you in your prayer closet? How can he use us anywhere else? He can't even depend on us to come to the prayer closet to find and get our instruction. To the ways that we're going to protect our mind. Simple stuff. Now, the first thing we're going to do, number one, we're going to get some rest. Does that sound simple? You see what I'm saying? The reason why I told my story is because it's a simple thing. Get some rest. I'm notorious for just going, going, going. I don't know how to stop. I have to make my husband will tell me, baby, baby. <laughs> uh, enough now. Just come and just go to bed. Just get some rest. You need to rest your body. Get some rest. Because when, you, when you're not rested, first of all, you're short with people. You're irrit irritable. You're not making any sense. You're not making good choices. <laughs> just, you know? And none of it just, it's just everything's off. Everything's off. You can't even trust God. You're too tired to even trust God. Help somebody else. Because when you do, the Lord renews your strength because that's the heart of the Father. That's the heart of the Father. And then this is, then the number three is, watch what you listen to. See how that, you see how it, it matters what you listen to. So don't think that it doesn't matter. Your word, your 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 music really does matter. Listen, the enemy knows that, right? What what was what was he? What was Satan before he? Exactly. So he knows the power of how to how to make that thing work against you. So 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 learn that you need to keep some praise on. Let me tell you, when you're going through some stuff, 
When you're going through some stuff, that's the time when you got to watch every area of your life. Keep your praise music going. Keep that word on. Keep the positive people around you. Do not go in a place where you isolate it because that is where the enemy is going to attack you. Yeah. Number four, we're going to spend time daily reading our Bible. Daily. Daily. Listen, let's commit this week. We're going to get, I don't care if you say all I can give God is three minutes, five minutes, two, I don't care what it is. Especially when we know that the word is going to keep our mind renewed, especially when we know that the word is just going to declare where we're going. And the word is giving us our strength. The word is giving us our ability. The word is transforming us. Why don't we want to continue with the transformation? Number five, we're going to pray. So right now, if you're saying, okay, I got, I just committed, I'm going to give you three minutes in the word. I, now I'm going to give you two minutes in prayer. I don't care. Listen, I'm not asking you to commit to me. I'm just saying whatever you commit to God to do, be faithful at it and watch him breathe on it. That's one thing about tears. You don't just cry just because you feel like crying. The Holy Spirit has to touch you. And when I know he's touched me and my tears are flowing, I know that now that he's here. Oh, daddy's in the room with me. Do you see how good God is? Oh, he gives you a sign to let you know he's with you. Don't you love it when he, when he shows up and he touches your heart like that, that the tears flow? I mean, I'm just like, why am I even crying? I'm like, Lord Jesus, it's because, just because you're here. Just because you're here. Just because I can come before you. And I, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I just wish I could just actually just hug you. Just, just to hug you. But you know what? It's the journey. He wants us to be hungry. Are you going to chase after him no matter what? This is one that is really super important. We want to spend time talking to godly people. Because everybody can call anybody who can tell you some stupid stuff. You know, that's a dime a dozen. You got all kind of dime a dozen friends like that that will tell you some dumb stuff. Or, or, or even if they say they're, because I'm not even talking about people who are not saved. I'm talking about Christians. Sometimes they're the worst. So, so find you those godly people. Let me tell you something. You're not going to find them in this big giant pool of people. There's going to be those few select. That's going to be the remnant folk. Okay, so just remember that when you're out calling your buddies and your friends, you got to find out who those people are. You know, I, I absolutely love when my kids call me, even though they call me with all their problems. But, <laughs> but I'm thankful that they do because that means they consider me a friend. That means they consider me as having good godly wisdom. And I try to be fair with them. And I don't try to, I don't try to take sides with anybody. I, I always say I side with right. Proverbs. 13, 20 to 25. I like this scripture. Walk with the wise and become wise. Do you hear that? Just hang out with somebody who knows something more than you do. Just <laughs> If they let you walk with them, walk with them. Some, you see, but you're going there arrogant trying to tell them how to do their business when they've already figured it out. Yeah, you're on the outs. <laughs> Avoid people in places, things, that would trigger a spiritual attack, temptation, or depression when at all possible. Okay, we'll, we won't worry about it. So, we just talked about it. Movies, conversations, things that will, you know has messed you up. I remember one time there was a, a, a drug, it, they call it a pit in Lima. I don't know if you remember that or not. It was an apartment complex called the Snake Pit. And, uh, and it was a big... Uh, high chain link fence around the whole thing. You had to go in through that chain link and, and there was so much drug and, and, and prostitution and, and just sin in the middle of this, this complex. And one of my best friends, her sister had gone there and they got into this uh, uh, drug deal that gone bad. And she was telling me about it. And, and the more she was telling me about it so that I could pray for her sister. But I felt the demonic forces so strong like I have never felt in my life and still to this day have never felt. When, I, when we were getting ready to hang up the phone, she said, I feel such a demonic oppression over this. I feel like we need to pray and, and take authority of this thing. And I'm telling you, if she had not prayed, I would have been afraid to leave my house. That's how powerful that was. I'm telling you, you have to guard your mind. And I'm so glad because that I experienced that because now I understand why I needed to experience that because it ta taught me a lesson how important it is to protect what you say, to protect what you hear, and to protect what you allow your mind to think on. Yeah. We took authority of that thing and I'm, I felt the peace of God return. It, it was like you could just feel like it was water being poured out and poured back in. It was the most supernatural thing, but I'm just telling you, keep a good tab on what you allow in. 
Worship the Lord at all times. Isn't that a simple one? I mean, that shouldn't even, I shouldn't even have to have that on this paper. If Christians say to Christians, my God, we got to tell you to worship the Lord, who else are you going to worship? Right? If you say you're a Christian, worship the Lord. Worship the Lord at all times. I'm telling you, his praise shall continuously be on my mouth. I just love it because I'm, I'm like, I was driving here today. I was just thinking in my mind, like, thank you, Jesus. I said, God, you. I got home after made for more, and I was going to take myself a little nap. And I laid in, in the bed, and I, I, I was getting ready to go to sleep, and I thought, oh, God, I didn't thank you for what you did this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, what you did this morning. You know, just don't forget all his benefits. That's a benefit. That's just that, that, that I have peace, that I don't have to worry. That, that when my husband called and said, baby, can you handle tonight? Because cause I, I, I got to get this taken care of. And, and then I think, okay, I, I'm not really ready. And then the Holy Spirit reminded me, yeah, you didn't finish the rest of your message. You see how, oh my, he's so good. He's so good to us. I mean, and I was even, didn't I tell you this morning, I didn't get to use all my scriptures. I even walked out of here and said, I didn't get to use all my scriptures. <laughs> all right, number 11. Oh, I told y'all about this this morning. Oh, 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 oh. Add fasting. Add fasting to your life. We have gotten away from, from fasting, but let me tell you something. Let me just show you something real quick. You see the scripture up there, Matthew 17, 14, and 21? Now, you all know the story. The father brought the demon-possessed son to Jesus for deliverance. The, uh, the demon-possessed son, he said, I took, you, I took him to your disciples, and, and they couldn't do nothing. So I'm bringing them now to you. Now, I want you to remember something here. It was because the scripture says that some of them come out by prayer and fasting. There are some things in your mind, those strongholds, that, that you got to do some fasting on. So, so this might be some old-fashioned grandma stuff, but let me tell you, this stuff, God didn't change his Bible just because we're in the 21st century. He, he still said we still need to live a fasted life. So if it's, if it's just you saying, I'm going to fast breakfast, or I'm just going to fast lunch, or I'm just not going to eat after 7 p.m. or 6 p.m., do something to attract the fragrance of God. Because if you do something to attract him, let me tell you, he's going to honor it. And it's going to be, sometimes it's going to be tough because the enemy does not want you to continue on doing what he said is going to bring change. But if you do, let me tell you, you're going to experience, you're going to experience the presence of God in a closer way. Oh, my God, this is good. Okay, keep a prayer journal. I love my journal. Do y'all have, who has a journal? Everybody should have a journal, men and women. Keep a journal because God is doing something for you all the time. And if you don't stop and look at it, you will go into, woe is me, where is God? I need God to touch me. I need God to heal me. I need God to deliver me. I need God to set me free. And all the while, you're missing all those things he's done along the way because you didn't take time to look at it. And I'll just sit on my back porch and I'll read through that thing. And then I start getting excited. Oh, my God, I forgot you did that. You know, the brain is something. It, it will forget a lot of things. But if you start opening your journal and you start reading the blessings that God has bestowed on you, then you start thinking, oh, shoot, how in the world am I worried about this little thing when God did this big old thing over here? Read your journal. Keep one. Last one. Stay busy. I was talking to Lisa this morning. I was like, you know what? I know, you, you know you're at home by yourself. You got the baby, just you and the baby. The baby's great. But you know what? When your husband's at work, come on. Be around some people. Be around some godly people. Because look what the scripture says here. First Timothy. Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And not only do they become idlers, but also busybodies hmm, who talk nonsense saying things they ought not to. You see, because when you don't have anything to do but just sit there, next thing you know, you just got to call somebody. I remember my grandmother, she told me, uh, my grandma Washington, she told me, she said, I quit watching this whole soap opera years and years and years ago. She said, because when I came home and my husband didn't treat me like those women got treated Number on them soap opera, she said, I looked at him like he had two heads. <laughs> and it came between their marriage. You see, because she allowed the enemy to work and not even knowing that that's what was happening. You just enjoying your show. Right? You see? So you have to be careful what you allow in. The devils attack people's minds immediately after powerful, hear this, the devil attacks people's minds immediately after powerful spiritual events. 
right? The devil attacks people mind after, after powerful spiritual events. So when you get your breakthrough, this is, you know, what happens is we think, oh, we got our breakthrough. Whew, we can relax a little bit. It's almost like when you finish building your house, you say, we're going to take a vacation and celebrate. That means we ain't thinking about nothing. We're just going to have a good time. That's what it is when the, when the Holy Spirit does a powerful thing in your life. You just want to like, hey, whew, yeah, I made it past that one. I'm going to chill for a minute. Oh, no, that's when you need to push a little harder. Push a little harder because now he's coming at you with full force because he knows, okay, he, she, she's, she's not on the wall no more like she used to be. Stay on that wall. Stay on that wall. All right. Praise the Lord, y'all. Okay. <laughs>